Hey everyone, welcome to Frame Academy Project 5 using sound and video in your WebXR sites. So a few quick notes before we dive in. Uh, it's definitely best if you check out the previous projects, 1, 2, 3, and 4, before you dive into this one. This one really builds on a lot of those skills uh, that you learned in previous projects. And uh, the project has a few parts, right? And each part has a challenge. I really encourage you to, uh, to do the challenges because then you'll be building your own WebXR project and that's really cool. Okay, if you're curious to hear more about Frame Academy, feel free to shoot an email uh, to hello at framevr.io. I also encourage you to join our online community. If you click the button at the top left, you'll see a quick link to join the online community. It's just a simple uh, online sort of forum where we uh, share ideas, post questions, and uh, learn from each other. Okay, fantastic. With all that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, as I said, this project is about bringing uh, sound and video into your project, including 360 video, which is really cool. And the first thing we want to do is set up your project. Now, if you look below this video, you will see a button you can click on. It says copy the starter project on glitch. So all Frame Academy projects, there's, you'll see this button which uh, when you click, it'll open up a project for you in Glitch that is a copy of the starter project that is yours. And if you uh, create an account with Glitch, you'll be able to uh, edit this and your work will be saved so that this really becomes your, uh, your project. And you can click Show Live to actually see uh, your WebXR site. Okay? If you want to change its URL, uh, you can adjust that up here at the top left of Glitch change the title there. Okay, it might start you out on this readme file, but um, to see the HTML, uh, you can just click on index.html. And if you've gone through the other projects, you'll know what, uh, what these things are, but these are our JavaScript files, and each of these has an A-frame component in it that uh, controls some interactivity uh, in the project. Okay, so why even bring sound into a, uh, a project? This might seem obvious, but uh, you know, just some of the reasons why sound is really important in WebXR projects. Uh, sound can really add to the kind of ambiance of a space. Um, sometimes you want sounds in a user interface, like when the user presses a button, it causes a little click noise just to kind of reinforce that it's been clicked. And uh, sometimes people just want to put in stuff that's informative, right? If you're making like an immersive museum, you might drop in a, uh, a sound clip of a tour guide uh, explaining some, uh, some information about an artifact or a painting. So there are lots of reasons my, why you might want to use sound. And, and the same goes for video, right? Video is a very uh, powerful medium and uh, either flat or 360 video uh, can be used as just one other tool in your toolkit in your WebXR project. All right, the very first thing we want to do is preload our audio and video files. Okay. Now, if you look in the assets folder of the starter project, you'll see that I've already uploaded an MP3 and uh, two MP4s. One of them is a flat video and one of them is for a 360 video. I want you to, and in, in, in the challenge for this project, I have you just simply bring in your own uh, sound and video files that you'd like to bring into your project. And you can just drag them right here into the assets folder. And what this does is it creates a, uh, a URL for the asset that you can then use uh, in your project. Okay, and you can access it just by clicking on it and then clicking copy URL. Now to actually preload the assets in your scene, you need to bring them into this A assets element. And this is called the, uh, the asset management system. And when you preload assets in here, it doesn't actually bring them into your scene. It just simply uh, preloads them so that they, uh, as soon as your WebXR site loads, these assets will kind of load on the back end and be stored in the browser so that they're ready to go. And this approach is better than uh, the alternative because it kind of gets all the loading done out of the way in the beginning instead of making it like stuttery or laggy uh, later on. 
So it's always best practice to use this asset management system. If you want a refresher on the asset management system, uh, in project three, I believe, uh, part three, there's a dedicated section to the asset management system. Now, before uh, we had used the asset management system to bring in some images, right? If you look in the starter project, the, the brick texture, this wood texture, <coughs> excuse me, this Picasso painting, those were all images we had brought in. Um, the 3D model over here, this Triceratops skull, and this photosphere we had all brought in. But now we are bringing in uh, two new elements, um, audio and video, right? And uh, when you bring these in, uh, when you make these elements, right? Remember with elements, you need that uh, starting tag and the ending tag. Give them an ID so that we can reference them below in our uh, HTML. And then for the source, you simply paste the link uh, that's generated in that assets folder on Glitch. Okay? And just as always, when you're setting attributes on your HTML elements, make sure that they are in quotes, right? It goes the name of the attribute equals, and then the value of the attribute in quotes. Okay, so that's how you can make sense of uh, these elements here, but I encourage you to bring in your own assets and then uh, use those in the project. The sound files should be .mp3 or .wav. Um, I recommend .mp3 just because the file size is lower. And then for the videos, I recommend uh, .mp4. And if it's a video sphere or a 360 video, you want an equal rectangular video sphere. Okay, fantastic. Um, once you have done that, the only other thing I want you to do in this part is check out in the starter project um, I made a little user interface for a music player so we're gonna start with sound okay and um, what I want to do first is make a a little music player that shows you how to play stop and pause an audio file and the audio file that I brought in was a, a song an instrumental song that I that I made I'm just kind of I'm a shameless uh, self-promoter, so the, the example here is one of my songs, but um, check out the starter project, and when you load it up, look on the left wall, and you'll see the little, uh, a few buttons I set up. Now, these buttons don't actually work yet, okay? I've just set up the visuals uh, for the way the user will play, stop, and pause the audio file. In other words, the user interface. The user interface, or UI, is uh, it's kind of like the way that the user or viewer of your site interacts with it. Um, and UI is, is really important. Uh, there are lots of sites and apps that have tons of really cool features, but because it's difficult to use them, because the user interface is so bad, it's it almost doesn't matter, right? Um, so user interface is a very important, you know, sort of topic all on its own. There are some people who are just user interface designers and professionals who, who study like how to make good uh, you know, not just beautiful, but also usable uh, user interfaces. I'm not actually particularly good at it. <laughs> um, this is just, you know, something I kind of pieced together kind of quickly. So I don't claim to be a, a UI expert. Uh, you'll probably be better at it than, than I am. Now, in the uh, HTML, if you look at lines 78 through 106, that is my code for my user interface. Um, it's all nested under this one music panel entity. And within that entity, uh, you'll see that even some of the children elements have children of their own, right? There are elements nested inside of the elements that are nested inside of the music panel. Um, for example, if you look at, there's a, a plane for each of the play box, the stop box, and the pause box. And if you look, these are actually all just A-frame shapes. This is a triangle. Um, and the, in the play box, you'll see there's a triangle nested uh, inside of the plane. The pause box has two entities inside of it because the pause box just has two, uh, two planes inside of it, Okay, making up that little uh, pause symbol there. So uh, just check it out, S make sure you can make sense of it, uh, bring your own assets into your assets folder and uh, preload them inside of the A-Frame asset management system and then you will be good to go for the next part of this project. All right, thank you very much and let me know if you have any questions in the online community.